thought about a vacation to Daytona Beach, Florida, Cancun, Mexico, or the Bahamas, those are just a couple of the world's best spring break destinations. Today I want to explain to you the origin of college partying during spring break and the consequences it can bring. Everyone has been on a spring break trip one time in their life. If not, there's no better time than now. Today I will discuss the history of spring break, common practices during spring break, and the possible consequences of excessive partying. Spring break is a re uh, week-long recess from studying in school and is widely known in many countries uh, such as the United States, Canada, Korea, Japan, and China. But the first spring break was born right here in the United States in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It all seems to have been started, in or started out innocently enough. According to the Orange County Register, in 1935, the Colgate University swim coach worried that his team would be out of shape during the break. <coughs> A student's father suggested, should, suggested to take a trip from Hamilton, uh, New York, to Florida to train in the new big pool um, that just opened in the city. So they did. The group was warmly welcomed, and the word started to spread, spread among college students that it was a sunny de destination, destination to travel. Um, here's a timeline of the spring break and how it started. Uh, it shows right here in 1935 that the, um, the twin team went there. Uh, late 30s, it started getting bigger and bigger. More people started to go to Florida. Um, and then 1960, it really started to, um, to boom. Um, after a uh, movie um, where, named Where the Boys Are, um, basically, it uh, was a spring break college scene, and it was, um, it was a setting within Fort Lauderdale, um, Florida, and it was a huge hit. Um, right here in uh, 1961, the year after the movie um, was um, released, uh, 400 youth are jailed because of alcoholic-fueled mayhem in, uh, in Florida. Um, 1963, a movie uh, called Palm Springs uh, was released, and it also basically moved the uh, um, spring break from the north to the east coast to the west coast. Um, 19, in 1980s, um, uh, Florida has the first wet teacher contest. <laughs> um, and then in 1985, uh, the appeal of the annual Spring Break March Madness, uh, March Madness was wearing on the original hot spots um, in Fort Lauderdale, and the crowds reached over 380,000 students. Uh, residents, business owners, and polices, police were uh, there to help tame the chaos and destruction. Um, after, that local, after that incident, the local government passed laws restricting parties. Um, in 1986, MTV comes out with the first Spring Break in, in Florida. Um, in 1991, um, Sonny Bono, the man, uh, mayor of uh, Spring, uh, Palm Springs, uh, bans uh, wearing thongs in public. Um, and in 1994, uh, California actually has their first spring break um, show on MTV. And then in 2005, uh, due to the, uh, actually, yeah, due, actually 2001, sorry. 2001, uh, Panama City, still in Florida, um, had, brings 450,000 students in for spring break, um, obviously beating that first record of uh, 380. Um, and then 2005, as a result of the 85 and the 90, um, 90 or the 2001 um, incidents, um, it died down a big time. Uh, I think 15,000 students were seen in Fort Lauderdale, which is 96% below what it was um, the year before, or the year before. Um, from then till now, spring break parties um, have been widespread throughout the world and they are a heavy influence on college students. Next, let's look at what, uh, what students do during spring break for fun. Spring break activities usually include binge drinking and ca casual sex. Many college students see spring break as a time to go wild without worry. According to the Journal of American College Health during spring break, the average male reported uh, drinking 18 drinks per day and the average woman drinking 10 drinks per day. More than half of all men and uh, more than 40% of all women uh, said that they would use drinking as an excuse for outrageous behavior. Um, oh, oops, nope, sorry, I lost my more, more than uh, half of all the men and 40% of all the women drank until they became sick or passed out at least once. 74% uh, of women said that they used drinking as an excuse for outrageous behavior such, such as uh, public nudity, dancing on tables, and excess and an excuse for, or 
and drinking contests, according to a Washington Times poll in 2006. Spring break is a great time for college students to get away from everything and party, but there are also some consequences too. As much fun as partying are, is, there are many consequences that can be harmful to your health as, re as a result. The U.S. Department of State says young Americans have suffered injury or death from automobile accidents, drowning, and falls, in addition to other mishaps. While these accidents are sometimes chance occurrences, many are caused by drug and alcohol abuse. During spring break the f alone, uh, physicians see the effects of um, intoxication three to five times the legal limit. Injuries from high-speed car cars uh, and jet ski accidents, pumped stomachs, broken legs, and spine contusions from balcony falls, and um, occasionally date rape occur yearly. Scott Walters, um, a doctor from the University of Texas School of Public Health, states that almost 1,700 kids, uh, students die from uh, as a, or die e each year um, as a result of alcohol misuse. Therefore, you can tell that spring break can be a blast, but be careful. Um, Spring break is a huge part of college history and should be practiced yearly. Partying, drinking, and sex is good and expected during the month of March. <laughs> and everyone should take, take a trip somewhere and crazy and try it. Yes, there is a lot of consequences of partying, but that's the risk we're all going to have to take. Thank you. So Mark, what did you think? Um, yeah, he had a clear thesis statement, and he chose an interesting topic. He, he had, uh, he had like, the, he stated the specifics, and he showed that he did a good research on the material. Um, I liked the topic because it was interesting. Um, the only thing is, uh, the chat wasn't clear to everyone in the class, so I was hard time looking at it. And also, I did not know that the tongs were banned in Florida, but it was legal in the first place. It was, it was, it was interesting. I liked it. They're okay at the pool, just not on the street, and at Palm Springs, you know. Yeah, because I got a ticket for wearing a thong in Palm Springs one time. <laughs> just last year, as a matter of fact. It was not a good thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, Michael, I think, I think you okay, ask an okay rhetorical question as your attention device. The topic is very clearly identified. You have a very clear thesis and an excellent preview of what's coming up. Um, on the first point, you had citations of information at the beginning, a little bit less so on that first point as you went along. It got better on the second and third point. You came back with some additional research. So I thought you did a very good job trying to get information into the speech and cite that information. Um, the, uh, you know, I think you could get a little bit more out of some of the examples and stories if you were talking to us instead of kind of depending on the notes. I mean, let's face it, uh, you're talking about things that ought to be interesting, enjoyable, tragic, or stupid, and, you know, there should be some involvement when you do those kinds of things. And because you sometimes are just going through what you've got on the page, it, it doesn't come across as effectively as it could. But like I said, I, I like the content for the most part. It's very well organized. I'm going to agree with Mark. Basically, your visual aid was worthless. I'm, that's probably the meanest thing I'm going to say today. I, I apologize. That, maybe that was the wrong phrase. I could not see a single thing. On, I mean, I could see the line, but I couldn't read anything that's on it. And maybe Andrew could because it's right in front of him, but everybody else it's too small. So probably this would have been one of those situations where you need to condense what's on each of these individual steps, do a timeline, let's say, on uh, an overhead, for instance, and maybe do two or three steps instead of trying to get it all on one. Because as it was, I don't think it, it helped you much. It didn't add anything to your speech. And it's all for that first part of the speech. It's all in the, kind of the chronological history of spring break. Uh, you don't have anything for the later parts of the speech, and I think that there are probably some you know, some, some statistics that you could present. For instance, the number of hospital visits increases in this week. You could maybe have a pie chart or a bar graph that illustrated that in Palm Springs or Fort Lauderdale or uh, what's the other place in Florida that you mentioned? Daytona Beach, yeah, you know, that sort of thing. Um, you know, I, I'm missing... Uh, 
all you know Tuesday Weld in uh, where the boys are. We should have had that photo up there too, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you know, some of the MTV things, there's got to be some video, not video clips, but some pictures or something. Some to just punch it up a little bit because it is a little dry. All right, thank you. Um, do we